The next step of drawing our portrait is we're going to use our one eye measure to find all of the other facial features. We're gonna start by finding the measurement of the other eye. Because my person is looking straight forward, I can use the same one eye measurement to find the space in between the eyes and the space or the distance to the other eye. If you're like me and your drawing is a little bit bigger than your portrait, you wanna have one measure for the drawing and one measure for the photograph so that you can compare. So if I take my measurement with my photograph, Amanda Gorman's eyes are in fact about one eye distance apart. So I'm gonna take that one eye measure from the drawing, go along my center line for the eye. That's gonna be the distance to the left eye. So once again, I'm gonna take my photograph, I'm gonna fold it a little bit, hold it next to my drawing, and I'll use my observational drawing skills to draw her left eye. We start by doing the contour line. Then we go back and lay in values. And make sure you're leaving space for the highlights in the eyes. That's gonna make the eyes look more alive, more human. If you accidentally draw over those highlights, you can always use your eraser to bring them back out. I wanna pay close attention to where those dark darks are. Don't be afraid to just knock those darkest darks in first. It's gonna really anchor the facial features that you're drawing to get those darkest darks in. Then we can go and start putting in the medium gray values, the light gray values. Also, once again, pay close attention here to the whites of the eyes. The whites of the eyes are not always white, like I said before, because they are a sphere in our head. There's going to be a highlight side and a shadow side. So those whites of the eyes may appear a little gray on one side, a little bit darker on one side than the other and pay close attention to the skin tone of your person. Don't forget details. You wanna make sure that you have eyelashes if your person has strong eyelashes like she does. Any little wrinkles, any little creases underneath the eye, the inner corner of the eye the wrinkle for the upper eyelid, all of those little components will make your person look much more human, much more realistic and accurate. Okay, now we're gonna find the nose. Shout out to Genesis, whose beautiful proportion drawing I'm using. Remember, the nose is one and a half eyes down from the center line. So, I can check that measurement. Start from the center, find one and a half. Sure enough, her nose is one and a half eyes down from the center line. So I'm gonna go over here with my drawing eye measure. I'm gonna start at that center line. I'm gonna mark one and a half eyes down and to get it more accurate if you need to fold your eye measurement in half to find the exact center please do that that's going to make your drawing much more accurate don't just make it up or do it haphazardly because it all those little tiny mistakes will hurt the accuracy of your drawing overall okay so the bottom of her nose is going to be about here once again, I'm gonna fold my paper and I'm gonna draw her nose from observation. Also, the nose usually fits in between the eyes like we learned from our facial proportions unit. Some people are a little bit different though. If I look at my portrait of Amanda Gorman, her nose is slightly wider than the space 
between the inner corners. So I need to make sure that I'm ending the nose on this side at just about the inner corner, a little bit further out. And on this side, it's actually gonna be a little bit into the white of the eyes. Because she's slightly smiling, that is gonna pull her facial features up a little bit and make the nose a little bit whiter. It makes the nostrils flared out when you smile. And also everybody's face is just a little bit different. So some people's noses are gonna be a little bit wider than others. Some people's eyes may be a little bit farther apart than those rules that we learned about proportion. You just have to make sure you're looking closely at your photograph and using your measurement tool to find where things are supposed to go. So once again, I'm gonna start with contour lines. Then I'm gonna start laying in the values. The, no the nostrils will usually be the darkest dark. Even as I'm shading, I'm using my observational drawing skills. I'm constantly looking back and forth in between the photograph and my drawing because I wanna make sure that I have all of those value shapes drawn accurately. So don't just shade haphazard without looking at the photograph. You wanna make sure that you're always looking at the photo. And you may make a mistake here and there. You may shade things a little bit too dark. You can always use your eraser. Even I make mistakes. That's why pencils have erasers. The important thing is to recognize when you've made a mistake and adjust it. It's inevitable with drawing. We're never gonna get things perfect on the first time. Usually you may have to draw things over and over again until you get them right. Think about what we learned from the Proko videos during class about drawing noses. Especially here, we have a shadow side, we have a highlight side in the middle, and we have another slight shadow on the other side. Think about those planes as you're shading, those planes of the nose. Made that a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna adjust it with my eraser. Try to avoid harshly outlining everything. That's when you're gonna make the face look really, really flat. So try to just rely on using value shapes. 